If you want the perfect home defense weapon, buy a 12 gauge pump action shotgun. It's so effective that if you simply rack it, if an intruder breaks in, they'll flee in terror. That is the single worst piece of rectal discharge to ever grace the lips of any well-meaning gun store employee or individual in all of written history. Second, possibly only to, I agree, General Custard, the Gatling guns are too heavy and probably won't be of any use to us at Little Bighorn. The reality of home defense is unfortunately very different from being able to simply rack a shotgun menacingly or follow the incompetent advice of Joe Blow Biden of buying a double barrel shotgun and illegally discharging it skyward. Neither of these will actually frighten off the intruder. Maybe they will in one out of a thousand times, but realistically, shooters must be willing to sacrifice their sanity, their sleep, or even their very freedom, all in the defense of loved ones. As such, picking a home defense shotgun is a task that shooters should neither take lightly nor skimp on. For me, my perfect home defense gun is one that I've already vetted as reliable in competition. The Mossberg 930 JM Pro. It's a 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun made by Mossberg. And while it's a fantastic competition shotgun, there's a few areas that keep it from being a perfect home defense shotgun. So rather than insist that all of you out there go and research for dozens upon dozens of hours and figure out what those upgrades are, I've compiled them into a list of my top 10 plus one upgrades to transform your 930 to the ideal home defense scattergun. We'll start things off with number 10, the Mesa Tactical Urbino Stock. Not only does this pistol grip stock make for an excellent choice for shooters who are a little bit shorter or have shorter arms, given its reduced length of pull, but by freeing up a shooter's support hand, it makes it easier for them to flip on and off lights, open doors, or escort loved ones out of harm's way. Additionally, the stock comes standard with a limb saver recoil reduction pad, which is excellent given how hard 12 gauge defensive ammunition tends to kick. Other excellent features include three different sling attachment options that go between the receiver and the stock itself. Now, the only thing I don't love about this stock is how it's basically incompatible with the location of the Mossberg 500's safety lever. Whereas designs like the 870 have the safety located in the trigger guard itself, where it's easily accessible to the shooting hand's shooting finger, the Mossberg has the safety located on the tang of the receiver. Now this is because the original design was with a standard style stock, so when coupled with a traditional style stock, that safety location is actually superior to the A70s. Now this is something that can be overcome with a little bit of training, it's not that big of a deal, but something to keep in mind for sure. Well that brings us to number nine, the Miopta Miosite 3. Now this could be really any quality RMR type red dot, uh, but basically I like the Miopta because it's very, very lightweight, has an extremely low profile, and has good battery life. Now lots of people say that a red dot on a shotgun is kind of pointless because it's a point and click sort of affair. But this isn't true. Shotguns are still fairly precise, especially at close range. Having some sort of instant aiming indicator like a red dot or a hollow sight can be a real lifesaver. The reason I chose this mini or RMR type red dot is because it allows the shooter to use a standard cheek weld that they're accustomed to running a shotgun with. Also, since the optic is so lightweight and mounted in the center of the receiver, it doesn't affect the weapon's balance at all. Which brings us to number eight, the GG&G Tactical Bolt Release Pad. Now this pad's design is a little unconventional in appearance, but it's brilliantly effective. Not only does it make it easier for shooters to close the bolt once they've inserted a fresh round into the gun, but it's also much easier to find a low light because it's tactically different than the rest of the receiver. Also, it has a slight millimeter, two millimeter gap between it and the receiver, which makes it really, really easy to find in low or no light conditions. Two things I don't love about it, it's a pain in the ass to install, uh, requires a special tool, which is basically just a bent, small Allen key. It can be pretty dangerous to fingers in its oversized shape. Now, not because it will hurt you per se, but because it's possible that when striking it, your fingers will sit too high above it, and when the bolt closes, the charging handle could whack you in the fingers. Which is part of the reason why you should buy number seven, the GG&G Enhanced Charging Handle. Now, if you have a factory standard charging handle, you know how small it is and how difficult it can be to clear a jam when your hands are wet or the action is oily. The GG&G Enhanced Charging Handle seeks to alleviate these woes by putting a more aggressive neural texture to it, which makes it easier to get a solid grip on. And also, since it's actually larger than a standard handle, gives the shooter better leverage when clearing malfunctions. But how does this alleviate the problems with the release pad? By increasing the size of the charging handle, a shooter's hand needn't be in such close proximity to the pad in the first place. You're less likely to scrape your knuckles or scuff your fingertips when clearing malfunctions or chambering a new round. 
Which brings me to number six, the Mesa Tactical Magazine Clamp. This is a very simple design. It clamps onto both the magazine tube and the barrel simultaneously and provides a mounting point for either a rail segment or a quick detach sling mount. Why am I suggesting it for a home defense shotgun? Because I think it's pretty much ideal for mounting a tactical light, which is a must on a home defense weapon. After all, a shooter can't effectively engage what he can't see. And what light should you choose? Well, that brings me to number five, the Streamlight TLR-1S Tactical Light. It's one of the most affordable tactical lights made by a company with a solid reputation. And uh, it can be used as a makeshift aiming device because the bezel on it is actually designed to project the light into a narrow beam which is actually ideal for clearing homes because you can see enough in front of you to determine whether something is a threat or not, and at the same time can be used in lieu of a laser aiming device. To get the most out of it, I'd recommend getting a pressure switch, uh, though I have ran one before without it, even in matches, and not come into too many issues. But that's only after training with the light in its current location and current setup for several hours. Bring us to number four, the Nordic Components MXT Modular Magazine Tube Extension. So the hardest part of running any shotgun that isn't magazine fed, or at least detachable magazine fed, is keeping it fed. So the best solution is to carry as much ammunition inside the gun as humanly possible. Now these range from plus two to plus nine, and if you get the correct size one, then the tube itself won't extend past the barrel. Now generally this isn't as much of a concern as you might think it is. Shotguns don't spread out in the way that movies and television tend to suggest they do. But just the same, there is a point at which there's a chance of striking your own magazine tube should it extend far enough past the muzzle. Plus you get diminishing returns once it gets too lengthy and makes the shotgun difficult to maneuver indoors. And speaking of magazine tube, that brings you to number three, the OR3 gun Marine Spacer Tube. What is the spacer tube? Okay, so on the 930, this gas driven system, underneath the handguard is a spacer tube, a piston, and then a return spring that pushes the whole assembly forward after it's done recoiling. Now this piston transfers the impulse rearward towards that spring and then cycles the action. Now in my case, mine's coated with a Teflon-like coating that decreases the amount of wear on the tube itself, which is always good. What's really nice about this, and, and part of the whole marine part of the name, is that with the ventilation holes in the spacer, the vent slots on it will actually push excess moisture out as the weapon operates. It's a pretty inexpensive upgrade that greatly enhances reliability, especially because if you live in, in a climate that's hot or, or cold and you go in and out with the weapon ever, there's always a chance of condensation. This will allow the shotgun to, to operate at peak performance even if you don't get the whole thing bone dry. And it's about $59, which is really cheap insurance to make sure your home defense shotgun operates when you desperately need it. And speaking of which, brings you to number two, the GG&G Enhanced Magazine Follower. Now there's a center hole in the follower, unlike the traditional one, and what it does is it allows carbon and dirt that would otherwise collect in the magazine tube to be able to drop free easily. And because of the location of the loading gate on the 930, that means dropping it outside the shotgun and into the dirt. But what I really like about it, and this is mostly for three-gun stuff, is that it's made of a bright red anodized aluminum, so you can easily tell at a glance that your magazine is empty or full. Again, this is a pretty inexpensive upgrade that helps ensure proper operation of the shotgun when a shooter needs it most. Brings you to number one, which I believe is the most important aspect of a home defense shotgun, is proper ammunition. So what am I recommending? The Winchester PDX-1 12 Defender or their double X buckshot. Now, the ammo choice really depends on where a homeowner lives. If you're living out in the, in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any children in the house, the PDX-1 is a fantastic man stopper. What do I mean? Well, it's a one ounce slug with three double aught buck pellets. So you get some of the spread of buckshot and that hard hitting fight stopping power of a one ounce slug. Now the problem with this load is if you live somewhere that's more urban, it has a tendency to over penetrate. You have to use this stuff responsibly. You have to know your target and what's beyond it. Be smart about it. Now if you live somewhere like that, you might want to consider buckshot as it tends to over penetrate less. Though buckshot still really does over penetrate more than something like quality defensive nine millimeter hollow points or even an AR-15-223, which actually does not penetrate drywall nearly as well as people would think. I'll give a plug right now to the box of truth. Go there and you can see what I'm talking about. And because there's a plus one capacity on almost every firearm out there, I'm gonna do a plus one the Mesa Tactical Sure Shell Aluminum Shell Carriers. As I said before, keeping a shotgun properly fed is one of the most difficult aspects of using a shotgun for home defense. So rather than saying, well, whatever I've got in the gun is all I have, why not carry a few extra shells along the side of the receiver? Well, because if you over tighten the screws on a Mossberg 930 for a shell carrier, the screws that go through the side of the receiver, in lieu of the receiver pins, you can actually bind the action which is why I was hesitant to put it on the list in the first place. So what's your solution? Well, don't over tighten them. And thankfully that's not as difficult as it sounds. 
Simply checking to see if the action binds when charged rearward is enough to ensure proper operation during a live fire exercise. Now, if they're not tight enough, they could work themselves loose, but what will likely happen is you'll feel it rattle first, and then several hundred rounds later, it'll fall off, maybe. So if you feel it start to rattle, just hand tighten it, and you're good to go. Now, don't get me wrong. Shooters don't need to pick every one of these upgrades in order to transform their gun into the perfect home defense shotgun. Realistically, the only item on this list that's an absolute necessity is quality defensive ammunition. Everything else is secondary. It just allows a shooter to deliver that ammunition more quickly and more effectively. Still, the most important aspect of using a shotgun for home defense or any firearm for home defense is understanding how to use it and having the will to use it. Though the most important aspect of using any firearm for home defense is having the will to use it. Everything else is just secondary. Still, the most important aspect of, still the most important aspect of using any weapon for home defense is having the fighting spirit and the will to actually employ it. Everything else is just superfluous. Still, with such a grave topic at hand, this is a pretty serious matter. That's why there's not a lot of cool cuts and I'm not doing anything too fancy with, with the dialogue here, is that I want viewers to understand the gravity of having to use any weapon in defense of their loved ones. Thanks guys.